Let's go ball hopping. Did you mean hopping with these? Hopping with this ball? Can what? Waltz. It's a social dance from Austria, choreographed to a three-four time signature. Da 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 dum dun 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 dun. Ah, 형님 여기 손님들이 Waltz 가고 싶은데 어디 갈까? 뭐라고? 그거. Da 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 dun 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 dun. Oh, Waltz. 그러면 왜 지금까지 삼칠오공으로 될 거야? 아, 고맙다. Here we go. Their senior year with a ball called the Matura Ball, and I heard the students have to learn to waltz and practice group dances before the actual ball because they have to perform in them. The Matura Ball is the introduction into ball culture for young Austrians. It sounds similar to the prom in the U.S., but it is actually very different in its celebration. For example, the students invite their entire families from grandparents to younger siblings. Do you know where the term ball comes from? It's actually from the Latin word ballare, which means to dance. Formerly, a ball was only for the privileged, yet that has changed a lot. Nowadays, we can all join in. We can all attend this glamorous event. Talking about luxury and how it came about from the privileged class, King Louis XIV, the Sun King in 1600, introduced the minuet as dance style in the ballrooms of his court. This dance style dominated up to the 1800s. Around that time, waltz took over as the most popular dance. Did you know waltz began as a folk dance in Austria and Bavaria? It was the first dance where a man would hold a woman close to his body publicly. Yes, contrary to how it is viewed today, when it was first introduced, the waltz was considered quite scandalous. Oh yeah, scandalous indeed. I'm glad that's not the case anymore. Now let's talk about the musical aspect of waltz. Well, the rhythm of a typical waltz consists of a three-quarter beat. The most famous, of course, Austrian composer is Johann Strauss. He came from a family of composers and musicians in Vienna. And surprisingly, waltz was introduced in England as a German waltz in the 1800s. As you can see, today in Austria, there are many variations of this popular 18th century event. Yes, there are balls ranging from the traditional and or casual to the most extravagant in its elegance. So, for a traditional ball with folk music and traditional Trachten clothes, you would attend the Bauernbund ball. Bauer means farmer. Now, most people in other parts of the world would not think of a farmer's ball as a ball at all, with the elegant clothes and the three-quarter beat music and the waltzing. However, it is considered a ball nevertheless here. Now, the Opernredoute in Graz. Now, that is a ball how most people imagine a ball should be with all the fancy dresses and tuxedo suits. Surprisingly, it's not just an evening of ballroom dancing at the Open Redoute. No, no, no. There are all, you are also bombarded with live performances all throughout the evening, such as symphonic concert, musical performances, ballet, and the performances of the debutants and their partners. This particular performance is called the Polonaise dance, which opens this ball. Afterwards, it's Let's Waltz. Yes, that's a very famous saying to open um, the actual public dancing part of the ball. 
Of course, if all this is not enough ball dancing experience, there's always a mask ball called the Casanova in Graz that one can attend. your organization? Well, it's the most beautiful job in the world so far, uh, I can say. It is uh, a mixture of organization, it's uh, also a creative part. I'm working together with great technique teams, with great artists. We're having perfect singers, dancers and uh, technical teams here and they are all working together on this one big project which is called Opa Redoots. And we're all just loving it. Okay. Can you also tell us how many guests are you expecting this year? We're expecting, like always, 2,500 guests. And yes, it's just a few more hours until we're opening our doors. And we're looking forward for this moment. Okay, then together, could you kind of tell us, manpower-wise, how many actual manpower were needed or required to put this event together? A rough estimate. Yeah. Well, we uh, we do have around these days, starting on from Wednesday night until today, Saturday, mm -hmm. uh, we are always having around 350 people at the same time here in the Opera House. They're working at the different parts of the Open Middle. And at the evening itself, we, are, we do have uh, 330 different artists and again another around 350 technicians, uh, waiters and so on who are all doing the best to make our guests happy. That's fabulous. Um, also, um, talking about performers um, and musicians, can you give us a rough idea how many artists and performers just, just uh, just to let our viewers know the amount of uh, thought that went to it, went into this, and the amount of uh, cultural experience yes. they are to expect when it comes to the artists. Well, season. you can expect uh, about 330, 350 different performers, different oh. artists here. They are singers, dancers, orchestras, bands, piano players. We are welcoming and having presenting all these different artists here. They are the best, and uh, the best is just what we want to show our guests. So, Mr. Reinhardt, we would like to thank you for allowing our viewers a behind-the-scenes oh, look. Yes. Um, can you tell us about your organization and uh, your role and what you are doing behind the scene? Okay, so it's nice to have you here. Thank you. And I'm responsible for everything like coordinating stuff like getting people into the house. The is a green event that means we take care of our waste and we have in our logistics um, uh, we keep an eye on that we don't produce too much waste and um, that's why we got uh, two prices for that. And that's particularly your responsibility to I'm see that the whole thing is as green as possible. Right. That's one oh, of your. Okay. That's okay. one of your tasks. Yeah, one, one of, of my tasks. tasks. Okay. Yeah, and that's the most important one for me because it's it's a high level ball, and mm -hmm. we we were the first to do this on this cultural level. Okay. And the history, the wonderful history about this being here in Graz. Yes. Can you tell our viewers about that interesting history? How it, been going. Yes, uh, the Opera House was built in 1899 
and uh, on the 100th birthday of the Opera House in 1999, there was the first Open Redoute, and it became just history. It's our 21st now, our 21st Open Redoute, oh. and uh, it started very small. Yes, and from the second Open Redoute on, we build it up and created all the different worlds I will show you afterwards. Yes. So Beatrix, you're from Germany. Are all the balls in Germany similar to Austrian ones? Ah, uh, there is really not much of a ball culture in Germany. So I'm really enjoying this cultural treat. So I'm glad that you told me about this wonderful Austrian experience. So what stood out most to you? Uh, the amount of balls available in Austria. I learned that there are 400 or so balls in a given year. Now that's a lot of dancing. What stood out for you? Well, the Open Redoute impressed me in how they combined a high-level event with environmental awareness by making it green. So here's a question to you, our viewers. Would you go ball hopping? And which ones would you attend? Please tell us in the comments below. Yes, we'd like to hear from you. Hope you enjoyed the ball hopping. Subscribe for more future episodes. We will see you next time.